everybody, I'm Tony Fleming from Fleming's Ultimate Garage. This is a great looking car, is it not? I probably don't even need to spend some time ruining your video by talking. Uh, I think just walking around, opening some stuff up, looking at it in the real light, real world that it is in digital video, right? Versus maybe seeing it online in pics is enough. However, humor me. I might be able to point out a couple small things that you might not have noticed and you might get to see some things, especially on the test drive, uh, that make for a much better car. Anyway, let's get started and check out what we got. All right, so I'd like to take a moment to talk about uh, not just the paint of this car, because we're going to get into that in just a moment because everybody likes that part. Uh, but I also want to get into this, making this your own. And what do I mean by that? Well, when a car is restored, all the hard work's been done. Like if you've never restored a car and you're just getting ready to buy a car and you're watching this video, let me just tell you something, man. Ask anyone who's restored a car, 99% of the world will never do it again. Why? Because it takes two to three years to do it. It costs way more than the car's worth when it's done. Why do people do it? Well, they think they can beat the system or they want to just do it, right? In the case of this car here, I call this car a tweener. It's been restored, but it's been restored and could be and could go either way uh, as far as an end result for you. Here's what I mean by that. It's in between a standard classic RS Camaro, right? And a uh, Pro Touring Camaro, right? So we have a couple small things left to do to this car and uh, I want to share that with you when we get started going around here. So this is a standard color, the Rally Green paint for 68, right? The interior, houndstooth interior, you could get for 1968. Where we're gonna make some changes and calls are, do you wanna go to Rally Wheels, maybe Redline Tires, right? And give a stock look here. Or do you love this wheel and tire set up here? I and mean, maybe we wanna get a, a, a billet steering wheel to kind of finish up the interior inside there. That's what I mean by that. Under hood, we can leave it dressed up the way it is or dress it back to stock there. Uh, these emblems here, are the original emblems. However, they're incorrect for the car because it no longer has a 327 uh, in the 250 horsepower range, right? This has a built aluminum head 350, which has 50% more power, and we need to change that on there, and I'll make sure that that happens for you. So a 350 in this car with a four-speed, this car uh, is SS power plus some, all right? Uh, we have electric headlight doors here. So instead of having either manual doors, a lot of these cars don't even have anything there. They're just manual. People open and close them because it's expensive. It's expensive to make them work, right? And I'm pointing out things that make for expensive things. The wheels and tires, probably $1,500, right? This electric headlight setup there, probably close to $2,000, right? Just to make these work properly. Then pay for the grill, right? Pay for the stripe, all of the good stuff that's going on here, all right? That's what I mean. And the most important part is the paint, right? Is it shiny? Does it look good? It's why we do the video here. It's why we ask you to take a second and look at the ceiling. Look at these letters in the paint. Don't look at the paint. And that's what I mean by that. So let's, I'm teaching you how to look at cars paint so you know what it looks like. In pictures, they, they can be anything anybody wants them to be, right? In the video, you can't manipulate that. And that's why I do this so you can see exactly what you're getting. So come on up here. Let's check that out. And let's see. A little piece of dust on there. Um, see how nicely you can read every uh, letter in there. All right. Nice and crisp. This right here, if, uh, uh, is painted on, it's not a tape stripe, which is really nice. Some people do that inexpensively and I'm pointing out things that cost money and why some cars are worth more than others. All right. So listen, we have two types of clients and I talk about this a lot. And one of them is just loves a great car, wants to go for driving it, go to work, go to, uh, golf, uh, take some friends out, do that kind of stuff. Love that. Other people want to go to a show and they want it to look nice. They want to be able to open the trunk and the engine compartment and show off their baby, right? In the case of this car here, you can be either one of those persons. Even if you're the person who doesn't want to go to the show, you're probably going to want to show this to somebody sometime and it needs to look good. If it's greasy and unpainted, like you see at many other dealerships who do nothing to their cars, here we're spending the money and time to dress these things up and make sure you're getting something. Again, why are some cars worth more than others? And here's a perfect example. Engine dress up package here, right? Uh, upgraded uh, engine in here, which is a crate engine worth uh, three times or, or so than a regular standard engine. Uh, this serpentine belt pulley system in here with billet pulleys. This radiator right here is 75% larger than the stock original radiator. Why is that a big deal with an electric fan too? Because you don't want to overheat. You want to be able to sit in traffic at the beach, at a car show, or whatever. The last thing you want to do is for the car to overheat. It has all new brakes in here. So it's a modernized uh, power disc brake system. That's all done in here as well. And then of course it has an upgraded stereo system inside. We'll get to that in a little bit. But uh, if you can also see here, this has the upgraded Detroit um, 
tubular control arm system and this suspension system, there are cheaper systems out there. But in the case here, the money was spent to put the right system, the most expensive system, and you can look at it and see it's made of stainless and billet parts and things like that. And it looks really nice under here. The other ones are like cheapo kind of stamped uh, or welded tubes. This is like billet and it's quality. You got fast ratio power steering, something you may have not even thought to ask about. That makes a big difference when you're driving these cars, especially uh, for long rides. All right. So many of the times people will say to me, wow, Tone, that's a great looking car, but we really don't know why it's a great looking car. Let me just run down a few small things. Let's recap. We have that RS front end, which I think makes a Camaro great looking compared to the standard bug eyes that are there. They're both great looking, but I think it's a level up. Front and rear spoilers, it's a big deal. When you see Camaros without a rear spoiler, they look dorky. They look kind of weird, right? Almost. Uh, and then here we have uh, the RS package. And you say, well, Tone, isn't the RS package like the front end? Yes. However, the RS cars remove the reverse lights to the bottom down here in the valance. This is done correctly. This is uh, perceived to be an original RS car, right? And that's why we know that uh, this here would be a completely different valance panel. Uh, new bumpers, new exhaust, new taillights and bezels, new gas cap, door lock, trunk lock, I mean. Like all of these little things start to add up to a restored car. All right. So, uh, these are good signs to me, and I'll tell you why. This is what came with the car. Well, tell them the car is full of stuff. Agreed. Brief. I need you to relax. Okay. A fender cover. Why do people buy fender covers? So they can work on their car and protect their baby. What's in that box, Tone? What's in the box? Oh, it's a car cover. Oh, so the, so the previous owner who restored it uh, spent the money to, to restore it and then kept it in the garage and inside the garage they also covered it too yes they did oh wow that's amazing and what if i wanted like a super nice like high-end audio system could i get that in the car well funny you should ask here it is this beautiful subwoofer that's here if you want we could probably move that back a little bit if you decided you needed more room in here but just wanted you to see that that's there these are the kinds of things where a new trunk mat this is all painted correctly new gaskets right uh, jacking instructions, like little detail stuff that may not seem like a big deal to you. However, the people that take shortcuts don't do those things. And in this case here, we have uh, a vehicle with all that good stuff. And you'd be proud to go to a car show, open your trunk, open your hood, and let people see uh, your baby. All right, so you're walking up to this car. It's Friday after work. You're walking up and you're leaving a little early because you said to the boss, listen, man, I got to roll. I got to roll. I got to get me some quality time today and you're walking up to your cool RS Camaro, right? And everybody gets to see this part of it, but you don't get to see this very often because you know why? You're inside. So let's get inside and see what you get to see. This is one of my favorite interiors in the whole world, houndstooth, right? And I often get asked questions, uh, and most people don't know this answer, and you may, but I always like to throw out a little quick uh, trivia. What's the difference between white houndstooth and black houndstooth? And people will go look at this and they go, well, is it... Uh, is it more of these or more of these? And, and that's a really good question. However, what it really means is, what is this around the seat and the door panels? If it's a white houndstooth interior, this black is now white. This is a black houndstooth interior because it goes well with everything that's going on here. White looks awesome as well. So, but the dash is always black. And the reason the dash is always black is because if it was white, it would reflect in the windshield. And that's why you never see white dashes in cars. It's a federal law. You can't sell a car with a white dash because it uh, reflects in the windshield and you can't see out of it, all right? Uh, we talked about the upgrades in this car. So we have the upgraded audio system with uh, kick panel manned speakers. We have uh, the subwoofer in the trunk. We have this cool looking digital sound system, right? Uh, that has all of these great features in it. It looks stock, but it's high end. It's all digital, all modern inside, which is cool. All these restored gauges, an upgraded restored gauge pack, all right? Um, you can uh, adjust the stereo system. It's got a couple uh, adjustments down here as well. Tack in here, normal stuff that you got for gauges here. One thing that I do like to point out too is if you wanted to, you could decide whether you wanted to leave the RS steering wheel here or maybe you wanted to go with a billet steering wheel, kind of complete the, the pro touring look. Up to you, not a lot of money, kind of cool to be able to, to do, to have some choices there, kind of make it your own. It's got a little cup holder here uh, and all that stuff comes off if you don't like it, but it's got the console as well, a little storage. Uh, and it's got some green lighting down here that kind of matches the rest of the interior, which is really nice. All right, so I'd like to close up this video. Listen, we have a lot of money spent on this car. The restoration alone on these cars, 
just uh, restoring stuff can be in the fifty to seventy-five thousand dollar range. This car here, upgraded big wheels and tires, so it handles so much better than the original car did. Upgraded braking system, it stops better than it did in the past. Upgraded cooling system, upgraded engine, right? Rebuilt transmission, clutch, rear end, front and rear spoilers, like all of these great things uh, that are here. And I wanted to point out that the front spoiler. Uh, that I mentioned a couple of times is uh, here as well. And that'll go on and then a couple of the emblems and whatever. Just want to get the video out quickly to everybody so you can see it. Anyway, at the end of the day, it's a 68, beautifully restored Camaro that has great eyes that you can enjoy, take to work, go to dinner with some friends, uh, just enjoy some life and get in this car and like work yourself through the gears. And lastly, if you feel like you love this car and you need an automatic transmission, these can be converted to automatic as well. All right. Anyway, uh, if you don't mind, uh, well, more importantly, call us 301-816-1000. We'll tell you all about this uh, cool 68 RS Camaro convertible, uh, four speed. And uh, if you don't mind, hit the like button down below. That helps get our message out. And I really appreciate that. Uh, subscribe to the channel. We've got new stuff coming out all the time. Angie's helping us get that done. And lastly, maybe share it with your friends they might see something they'd like as well. All right, I'll see you on the test drive. All right, so the sound is 50% of everything, right? How about we get that started? Whoa, how are you doing? All right, man, let's go for a ride. Yeah, the upgraded suspension, you can feel, look at that. Nice. Unfortunately, it's a traffic-y, busy day here today, so we're not going to get able to go too fast, but I just wanted you to see what restoring a car the right way does. Do we hear the rattles and squeakiness of an old convertible? No, because it's restored. Does it handle nicely and not fall over on itself? Yes, because it has a suspension, wheels and tires upgraded brakes right it makes a great sound this i look at the smile the smile says to me like this is therapy versus uh having to do other stuff i just i don't know man i just think these kind of cars are such a great value why because because you can go for a drive in a car like this and they kind of been staying the same in their value forever uh and even if they didn't it's there's no such thing as a as a five thousand dollar you know 68 camaro convertible right they're still very expensive um in relation to what they were new so clearly they've been going up in value over time and then you do these kinds of things right here to make it a driver's car right a driver's car that's what we're doing right now we're going for a drive and making nice sounds and we're smiling and we're not thinking about all of the stuff that we need to do today All right, back on the road now. And well, I'm sorry that we can't go too fast. I'm gonna leave that up to you. I love the blip of throttle in between shifts. The downshift when you come into the corner. That's a nice car, man. This is nice. What are we doing? We're out for therapy drive. <sighs> so relax now. All right, well that concludes this part of our tour. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, I'll see you on the next one.